Welcome back to our chapel chat for Easter Monday, April 13th. Father Joe, can you read the gospel? This is from Matthew chapter 28. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had happened. The chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel. Then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Well, the resurrection is the most bold claim ever to happen in history, right? It's that Jesus Christ is alive and he conquered the grave. And it's interesting here to see the, 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 the distinction between how people react to the resurrection, to the claim of the resurrection. First, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went, away, went quickly away from the tomb, and they ran to announce the news to the disciples. Right? They're filled with joy. They're a little fearful. They don't know exactly what's happening. And Jesus approaches them, and he appears to them, and he says, Do not be afraid. And then you see on this other hand, the guards, and the, I'm sorry, the chief priests, uh, hear from the guards what happened, and they try to quiet the claim. Yeah. Give money. Be quiet about this. Right? It's interesting to see that same dynamic play out today. Yeah. Right? And just this morning, I was reading from Fulton Sheen's Life of Christ, and he says that miracles don't necessarily bring belief. If someone is completely hardened of heart, mm-hmm. even if they were to re- witness the resurrection, they still would not believe. That's right. And that's certainly true in this case, because here they are. They, they're hearing that Jesus really did rise from the dead, but still they won't believe, and they're just trying to, to, to pay these guards off to make him be quiet about it. I was struck by how the response the first thing that Mary and the other, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary do is they run to announce the news. Mm-hmm. And that's meant to be an example for all of us that we are called to announce the good news. This is like one of the most basic duties of a Christian is to tell others about this incredible gift that we have in Jesus. And uh, this resurrection is at the core of the Christian message because without this, it's all a wash. It's, mm-hmm. it's a complete mm-hmm. waste of time. As, as St. Paul mm-hmm. says, mm-hmm. if the resurrection is not real, then we are the greatest of fools. So mm-hmm. this should drive us to bring the good news to others that God truly has risen from the dead. Yeah, one of the things that struck me as I was reading this too is how did the chief priests and the elders get the guards to be quiet? Money. Mm-hmm. They gave them a large sum of money. Money was used to betray Jesus, and money was used to keep people quiet. So in a certain sense, you could say, follow the money, right? Here's this bold claim that God himself became flesh, was crucified, and was raised from the dead. And what happens is there's a kind of an an attempt to to quiet that voice. And in it, there's a manipulation with regard to money, right? right? And and this resistance uh, to, to deal with the resurrection is something we see in every single age. Yeah. Right, it says that, and this story, right, that the, that the guards um, were asleep and the disciples stole the body, has circulated, made, circulated among the Jews to this present day. There are all sorts of stories circulating in our culture today about the resurrection right. of Jesus. Right. And a lot of times this great resistance to the gospel is not intellectual. Uh, it's, it's more of like, a, I don't want to live as if this is real. Yeah. A, there's a... There's a uh, in a motive to keep this quiet, to circulate other stories so that Jesus doesn't have any impact on my life. And what's interesting is when this was written, the Gospel of Matthew was, was written probably like 2nd century, maybe 3rd century, I'm forgetting exactly, but a long time ago. And so when this was written, they were talking about to the present day, you know, like 300 AD. But here we are, 2000 AD, and still this is the case. There are many Jews today 
who do believe this story about Jesus, yeah. but not just, not just Jewish people, people of all walks of life, believe, as you say, believe all sorts of things about Jesus. And I think one of the things that, that as we we're preparing for this, just what really struck me the most, I was like, Lord, what do you want to say to your people as we begin this Easter week? And the line, do not be afraid. Mm. That's the first thing Jesus mm-hmm. says to them. Do not be afraid. And there are all sorts of reasons why they could be afraid. There could be fear, just like you said, they just don't really know what's happening. Like, is this a vision? Am I going crazy? What is going on? Is this like, this could be all sorts of things. But there also could be fear that, okay, this is Jesus, and now I'm going to get it because we all betrayed him. We, we abandoned him. There could be all sorts of reasons for this fear. And yet Jesus, he comes, and he's just this loving, gentle presence. The first thing he says is, do not be afraid. And I think he wants us all to hear that because mm-hmm. in every age, there are things that we're struggling with that can lead us to fear. Certainly today with the whole pandemic, there's a lot of fear that so many of us are wrestling with. I think Jesus wants us to know, I am here. I've conquered sin and death. Mm-hmm. I'm victorious. Mm-hmm. Do not be afraid. One of my favorite messages about Easter that I often preach is, if the resurrection is true, we have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Every single fear that culminates into the fear, the greatest fear, the fear of death, has been conquered. It's been conquered by Jesus. And, and I think if we look at Christians in our culture today, what is it that we fear? A lot of times we fear um, being rejected, we fear being abandoned, we fear being ridiculed and mocked for our faith. Uh, and, and Jesus is just saying, don't be afraid. I got this, guys. Like, just stay with me. And, and I felt like when I was praying that same prayer, what do you want people to know? And I just felt like Jesus is saying, I'm alive. Yeah. Don't worry about the stories that have been circulated about me. Yeah. I'm alive. Come to me. Come to me. And it, it seems to be that this, this contrast over and over in Scripture is that when people meet Jesus, that's when they're changed. That's when they want to run to yeah. others and to tell others about Him. But when people don't know Him, people can get confused about stories. People can get confused about unbelief. They can become afraid. But Jesus is saying to us today, do not be afraid because I have you. And he, tells, and he tells Mary, go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. There's such an intimacy in that. He's not just going to have like some kind of spiritual experience or like some infused knowledge of what's happening, mm-hmm. but he wants them to physically mm-hmm. see him mm-hmm. and be with them. And as we'll, as we'll hear later in, in the rest of these Gospels, that Jesus does. He comes and he spends time with them. He lets them interact with them. He eats with them. And that's how close God wants to be with all of us, that they're... They will see me, and, and, and you will see me. You, I will be with you in all the things going on That's in right. your life. Jesus doesn't want to remain an historical figure of the no. past to say, and to parse out arguments as to what, you know, what's true and what's not. He wants to encounter us right now. Yeah. He wants us to see him right now in our prayer, to see him in our brother and sister, to see him uh, in, in his works and what he does in the world. Right? He wants us to encounter him, and it's when we encounter him we won't be afraid. All right. Well, very good. Um, Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you for raising your Son, Jesus, from the dead and giving us hope. We ask, Lord, that you come into any fear that we might have in our life, any fear of what other people think, any fear of insecurity about safety with regard to this virus, with regard to our jobs. We ask, Lord, that you come into all of that, that you speak your life to us, that any place in our hearts, any place in our lives that might feel dead, we ask, Lord, that you come in with your resurrection power to give us a newness, to to give us a fresh hope. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our hearts, all that you're doing in our parish. We ask that you increase all of that, so that we may run to announce the good news that you are not dead, that you are alive. You have conquered death and have given us hope. And we ask all of this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.